Hi, I'm Uniqlo. Uniqlo, 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 also Uniqlo. Uniqlo is the largest retail brand in Japan. It is also present in the rest of Asia, Europe, and the U.S. Uniqlo is a flagship brand of fast retailing. The parent company is ranked fourth in the retail industry after Zara, H&M, and Gap. The CEO of fast retailing, Mr. Yanai, plans to make Uniqlo the number one brand globally by increasing revenue from 13 billion USD as of today to 40 billion by 2020. Today, fast retailing makes around half of its sales in Japan and only one third abroad. The goal is to make 80% of sales in international markets by 2020, with help coming from Asia. Is this ambition realistic? How will it affect Uniqlo's performance? To find out, let us first look back at Uniqlo's success in Japan. Uniqlo started their business as a small regional men's shop in the Yamaguchi prefecture, the western part of Japan with the name Ogori Shoji. Masao Yanai, the father of the present CEO, turned over his business to his son, and his son, Mr. Yanai, transformed his business from men's apparel to the basic casual clothing, and opened the first Uniqlo shop in 1984. To make it realized, he introduced SBA, specialty store retailer of private level apparel, meaning that all the business processes from planning to sales were completely combined. Uniqlo smoothly increased the number of shops and made in load into Tokyo in 1998. At the same year, their name became popular by introducing the mega hit item Freeze. After the huge success of Freeze, Uniqlo experienced downtrend because people tend to think wearing Uniqlo was not cool. However, it revived again from around 2006 by introducing functional clothes such as heat tech, airism, and string fit jeans. With these items, their sales in Japan continue growing. However, Japan is a mature market with little growth potential. Hence, Uniqlo has aggressively expanded their business to overseas. They opened their first overseas shop in London in 2001, and getting to US, Europe, China, Southeast Asia, and so on. So, as we can see just now, uh, Uniqlo's strategy is to grow globally by opening more stores abroad. How does this affect their financial performance? Now, let's have a look at their evolution of stock price. The stock price of fast retailing rose steadily between 2011 and 2014 and reached its peak in July 2015. Part of this growth is due to macroeconomic conditions, but it also corresponds to the acceleration of the stores opening abroad since 2011, as we can see on this chart. Comparing the stock performance of fast retailing and its direct competitors, we can see that over the years, Uniqlo has outperformed Zara, H&M, and Gap. This outperformance can be explained by Uniqlo retail price and quality strategy. Their positioning is clear when we compare prices of some items, such as shirts, jacket, and jeans, among its competitors. With the exception of H&M, which offer lower quality, Uniqlo offer the best prices in all categories. In recent 10 years, in general, Uniqlo's total revenue remains in an uptrend and reaches record high every year. However, if breaking down by territory, we can see clearly that as Japanese market has become mature, it has lost its momentum as a revenue and profit driver, making global expansion a must-do choice for Uniqlo in order to sustain company growth.
Now, Uniqlo is the number four player in global fast fashion industry, but it still has a long way to go before it can catch up with world leaders like Zara and H&M. If looking at the net margin rate, we can also see that Uniqlo's profitability lags behind its main competitors. In 2014, Zara and H&M enjoyed a margin rate between 13 and 14 percent, while Uniqlo's net margin rate is only around 5 percent. From the breakdown of cost structure of the big four players in the fast fashion industry, we can see that the cost of goods sold which includes material and labor, occupies bigger portion in Uniqlo's revenue if comparing with Zara and H&M. As we just saw, Uniqlo's expansion abroad will generate more revenue, but securing a margin as high as in Japan remains a challenge. So let us have a look at the industry structure to better understand how Uniqlo could reproduce the Japanese success in the rest of Asia. Industry with value is high, as there are many substitute products. In this context, most retailers usually organize R&D around fast fashion. On the contrary, Uniqlo values fabric over fashion and focuses on quality. That's why Uniqlo has longer R&D cycles that can last more than one year compared to 15 days for Zara. Rather than fast fashion, our way is slow fashion. Slow fashion is to take time to carefully make high quality goods. This is all a problem of supply and demand. For some people, Fashion that can be made and sold quickly, such as fast fashion, will be preferred, while for others, our way is preferred. Simply put, I don't think fast fashion is the only way. Suppliers have limited the power because of their high number, relatively cheap labor, and low switching costs. In the industries, the way suppliers work with buyers varies. Zara limits subcontracting by manufacturing 50% of its products in its own plant in Spain. On the other hand, H&M subcontracts to 500 suppliers in Europe and Asia. Uniqlo chose to subcontract manufacturing by working with 70 partners, mostly located in China. It has a team of around 400 specialists, the Takumi team, who are sent to factories to control quality. The threat of new entrants is relatively high for small stores, but more moderate for large stores, as those require more capital investment. Uniqlo's new strategy is to replace small stores by big-scale stores of 1,600 square meters to improve the customer experience. This is the build and scrap strategy. However, Uniqlo is lagging behind competitors regarding e-commerce. In Japan, for instance, online sales only represent 4% of total Uniqlo sales. Buyers like Uniqlo can have more or less power depending on their positionings. Competitors usually offer a variety of clothing uh, following the latest trends. This requires a very reactive supply chain. On the contrary, Uniqlo sells a narrow selection of high-quality basics, such as shirts in many colors. This mass production model enables cost savings because, first, production doesn't depend on fashion trends, so Uniqlo can produce at a steady rate. Second, Uniqlo can negotiate lower priced deals with suppliers by placing larger orders. Asia is a key region for Uniqlo. Consumer expenditure on clothing and footwear is expected to reach more than 900 billion US dollars by 2018. The brand already has a good presence in Asia with around 800 stores. 
China is the second largest market of Uniqlo after Japan. The brand's market share is greater than H&M and Zara. However, Uniqlo is lagging behind competitors in terms of sales per outlet. Possible reason is that Uniqlo's positioning may not be adapted to Asian women's aspirations for fashion, especially when it comes to international brands. To compete, Uniqlo has enhanced its positioning on fashion by making partnerships with designers such as Ines de la Frassage. However, is this the winning strategy? Comfortable, affordable, functional. It's functional and calm. Uh, good quality. Simple. Clean. Basic. Convenient. The price is reasonable. Suits everybody. To differentiate in a highly competitive environment, we believe that Uniqlo should not position itself as a pure fashion brand. As we just heard from customers, the brand is mostly perceived as functional. We would recommend that Uniqlo builds on its niche strategy by further developing its active wear and sportswear product lines. This is where the company is strong and unique with its focus on technology. Uniqlo should do it now before H&M takes the lead in this segment. So China's manufacturing have been becoming less competitive, uh, partly due to higher wages. And we recommend that Uniqlo increase their partnership with Bangladesh, Vietnam, and in Indonesia. Uh, to reduce their dependency on China. Uniqlo may also consider building an automated factory in Japan to decrease its reliance on outsourcing and to directly control quality. Uniqlo should find a more efficient way to combine physical stores with online presence. One way is to consider its larger stores a showroom and locate them in cities accordingly. Location of stores is particularly important, as a good location increases sales per store. The build and scrap strategy was a factor of success in Japan, which should be replicated abroad. In addition, Uniqlo should increase its online presence for two reasons. First, this channel is undeveloped and is critical especially for China. Second, e-commerce is especially suited for Uniqlo as basics constitutes repetitive purchases. Eight, five, you, now, oh, you, 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 you.